a member of the community brought up something that I should have included in my time calculation video. So, better late than never, right? With all of these days being counted for, how often is Rentero obtaining girlfriends? Looking at my original count of 421, plus the 5 new days from the latest chapter since that video came out, divide that by now the 30 girlfriends, we have an average of a new girlfriend every 2 weeks or 14 days. Though that doesn't feel right. Let's take this a bit further. With my modified number not counting daily life segments of 282, plus the new 5, divided by 30, and we get a new total of a new girlfriend every 9 days. Which feels a bit more accurate, but still doesn't feel right. Though with the new revelation from the last chapter that we still haven't passed August 3rd yet with Ira's birthday, if we ever get some actual passage of time that we can calculate, the rate of acquiring a new girlfriend is going to be wild if we are to expect he got 30 plus girlfriends all in the springtime. Anyway, on to the new chapter and the new edition. I'm Moonlight150, and this is my review of the latest 100 Girlfriends chapter, Chapter 186, Ohana High's Shadow Boncho. As usual, I won't be going over everything in the chapter as I encourage you to support the Scanlation team that brings us these chapters every week. Well, except not on break weeks. And the official releases as they become available in your area. Now, on to the overview. The chapter opens up with Rentro leaving school with not a single girlfriend in tow, as they all seem to be busy with other things. Gotta be honest, the probability of all 29 being busy at a single given time is way too convenient. It's almost like the series is unrealistic or something. So with this newfound free time, Rentero decides to spend it training to fight... Godzilla? Okay, we're only on panel 1 and I already have too many questions. When suddenly, Rentero is called out by someone. An immediate zing, and unfortunately continues to be the disappointing kind of trend of awkward eye contact and nothing else kind of zing. We need to go back to the flustering. This new girl tells Rentero that they need to head to the back of the school to discuss some important issues. Those issues being the gang known as Rentero's family. Um, actually lady, it's a cult, but that's a topic for another time. The new girl introduces herself as Saki Tomogara, the well-known Shadow Bonjo of the school. And before you ask, no, a boncho isn't a secret menu item at your local Chipotle. It's a little bit early, but I guess it is time for another installment of Zoom Scan's Word of the Week. This being the word boncho. A boncho is the title given to a leader of a group of male Japanese juvenile delinquents. This word might not be as easy to incorporate into your vocabulary as ensconced was, but tune in next time for the next installment of Zoom Scan's Word of the Week. Rentero begins to panic to not only the fact that he is face to face with the shadow boncho of the school, and that he's never heard of her, but he doesn't even know who the actual boncho of the school is. So he begins to question if this school even has a gang tied to it, to which Saki replies, I don't know. I never thought I'd get this far. In a panic, she starts naming off some characters who might be the actual boncho of the school, like a big buff third year or the captain of the kendo club. Wait, that last one sounds familiar. as well as some rumors of a wall-crushing tsundere chick. Nice to hear that Rentero has basically assembled every possible leader in the school and his family already. Rentero asks why she wants to be the Shadow Boncho instead of the actual one for the school, only for her to say that being the Shadow one makes you more important. It's a bigger title to have. Rentero then asks if she's the greatest student, as in maybe the strongest. And no, I'm not making another Danganronpa joke, it's too soon since the last time I did that. Saki then proclaims that she is the most important student because she is the oldest in the school. Clearly that can't be the case, right? She would be around the same age as the rest of the third years. Unless somehow she was older. Oh, so yeah. Turns out she's actually repeating her third year. In America, we would call that a super senior. I wonder if the Japanese have a phrase for something like that. Maybe we'll learn about it in the next chapter. And not only that, but she did so on purpose by making herself sick and every other excuse we came up as kids trying to avoid going to school, just so she can be the oldest third year by doing it all over again. And when asked what he thinks of her efforts, Rentero is like me at the beginning of the writing of this script, couldn't think of a single damn thing to say. Also, I don't know how I feel about the snake vibes in her design she's giving off here. Mainly, it's the eyes. Perhaps you'd like to see how snake-like I can be! Saki begins to lay down the law regarding the gang known as Rentaro's family, but Rentaro tries to tell her that they aren't a gang, only to be cut off because she's getting flustered that he is calling her Tomogara-senpai, to which we learn she really likes that. 
Pleased with how things are turning around, Saki invites Rentaro to her usual haunt to hang out and treat him. And it turns out the place is actually called My Usual Haunt. Fitting. There we meet the kids that Saki has turned into her own little crew. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. Indel has told us there are at least seven. They're the same picture. She then gets them all, including Rentaro, a treat, saying this is the role of a senpai to treat her juniors. Rentaro begins to admire how much she embraces the qualities of a good senpai, to when suddenly, as little kids do, they break out into a fight. Saki tries to break up the fight, but she turns out to be so weak that a little smacking around by some toddlers is enough to knock her over. So much so that her hat is gone and is on the verge of tears. She holds back the tears as to not cry in front of the kids who look up to her, and Rentaro sees the situation she is in and takes her away from the kids before anything happens that ruins her reputation with them. We also get the return of the Avatar of Accountability, making this her third appearance in the series, still requesting people to kill her for the mess she causes. Well, at least she's taken responsibility for her actions. Saki then thanks Rentaro for coming to her rescue and getting her out before she cried in front of the kids, but denies that she wasn't actually close to crying. And I'm already getting shades of Mai from her. This isn't good. She then asks why he even bothered doing that, and Rentaro admits that as her junior, it's his job to make his senpai look good. Which makes Saki give Rentaro the good old classic lovey-dovey eyes that we haven't seen in a while. She goes more into her backstory regarding how she hates being looked down upon, both figuratively and literally given her height, just fully admitting her superiority complex, and calls Rentaro the best of the best kohai, which leads to an immediate mood shift of the tsundere flavoring variety, as she tells Rentaro not to bottle up his feelings and that it's perfectly normal for a young kohai to fall for the seniorest shadow bancho around, whatever that means. And Rentaro asks her out properly, and Saki takes it that she's doing him a favor. On to the review. I'm real curious how she's going to mingle with the others. Her headstrong personality of wanting to be superior to others will definitely come into some kind of turmoil when meeting the rest of the family. She may be the oldest student there, not counting Ira, who goes to a different school, but she also must compete with the likes of two teachers, the chairwoman of the school, and a grandmother. Then on the other side of the spectrum, she is already aware of people like Kishka and Karane that she'll have to compete with. Then you also have the physically big members like Yamame and Usachan. She's going to go into senpai panic mode by not being the oldest of the group, or the highest of any kind on the hierarchy. Hell, until Girlfriend 31 comes along, she's also going to be the lowest on the pecking order by being the newest girlfriend. Boy, I wish it wasn't break week because I need some answers now on how she's going to mix with everyone. And it's going to be interesting to see who she pals around with the most. Mero was kind of easy to guess that she leaned more to characters like Shizuka because of the book connection. With this one, I have no idea who she's going to connect with. Anyway, like I mentioned in the past few videos, it's break week next week, so no new chapter to go over. So I'm going to have to get to work on that break week theory video that you all voted on. Now I just have to figure out a way to talk about this idea and make somehow a cohesive script about it. And as you wait for that theory video, or wait until break week is over, you can also check out my review of the newest harem rom-com manga, I Can't Choose a Childhood Friend, where I went over both chapter 1 and 2 in the meantime. I've been Moonlight150, and I will see you all next week.